Type 1 diabetes is very unique from the other forms of diabetes. The causes of type 1 diabetes uh, classically include an autoimmune destruction of the cells that make insulin. As a result of not making enough insulin, blood sugar is elevated. That's the first sign of diabetes. Most people with type 1 diabetes have no indicator that they're at risk of the condition. There's no family history. It's really mostly a shock. And as a result, many people with type 1 diabetes rally around each other. There's a lot of groups on social media and also support groups because it's so unique. So really, what is life like when you have type 1 diabetes? You wake up in the morning and you look at your blood glucose even before you go to the bathroom. The first thing you might do is even dose a little insulin if your blood sugar's high. You have your insulin technology and you have your glucose monitoring technology. These are separate. On the insulin side, you'll have your insulin pens if you're injecting insulin separately, or you might have an insulin pump that'll allow you to adjust your insulin levels continuously if you want throughout the day. On the glucose monitoring side, we have a finger stick monitoring glucose monitor that requires a drop of blood to measure your blood sugar. This is considered the gold standard for knowing what your blood sugar is right now. But we also have what's called a continuous glucose monitor. The CGMs, as they're called, are designed to tell you what your blood sugar has been in the last five minutes. It's very, very close to the right now. That's why the FDA in the US and other bodies around the world have allowed now for the CGM monitor to take over for the finger stick. The guidance is now that instead of checking your finger prick up to 10 times a day, which is very difficult, you can rely mostly on your CGM. But when you are not clear on whether the CGM is accurate or say you don't feel the same way as the number shows, you're advised to check your finger prick just to guarantee that you have the right result. Maybe you get hungry and you need a snack. Again, you'll look at your blood sugar and you might actually have already done that because you dosed insulin and you wanna see how that worked for you. You'll take a quick glance at your continuous glucose monitor and say, oh, things are good. You're then having your meal with your family and somebody brings a dessert that you didn't expect. So you, you have to decide, am I gonna eat that dessert because I already dosed my insulin or is it something I'm going to dose insulin for because I really want that dessert? And hopefully you decide if the dessert is really special to eat it because you do have the ability to dose insulin for that food. When you have type 1 diabetes, you'll be advised that you need a care team. Your team might include a nutritionist or a dietitian, it might include an endocrinologist like me, it might include a nurse practitioner or a certified nurse educator or certified diabetes educator. These are individuals who are trained specifically to teach you about diabetes. Other people on your team might include an exercise physiologist, and don't forget our therapists or our psychiatrists and psychologists. They're very important to help you adjust to this new diagnosis. Men and women can experience type 1 diabetes differently at different times in their lives. For men, one of the risks of high blood sugar over many years is erectile dysfunction. For women, perhaps the most impactful part of a woman's life when she has type 1 diabetes is pregnancy. Women in pregnancy, normally women without diabetes, have lower blood glucoses than in usual non-pregnant life. The most important thing that you need if you're preparing for pregnancy is time. You need time to learn what are the strategies that you can adopt to achieve very tight control. And that's really mostly important for the first moments of pregnancy, the first few weeks of pregnancy. That's when glucose control is most important. During the pregnancy, you'll be guided by a, a care team that includes your endocrinologist and your obstetrician. Women also experience differences in their insulin requirements during their menstrual cycle. This is not true for all women, but it's common. The most important thing for you to do is to collect information around your cycle. Communicate what you have found. When you have diabetes, there are a few things that you wanna make sure you stay on top of. Number one is an annual eye exam. Those little vessels in the back of your eye, the retinal vessels, 
they are susceptible to the high blood sugar, but you won't know, you won't feel that. It's completely asymptomatic. You need to have a test to make sure that your blood cholesterol is in target range for diabetes. This is important because all people with diabetes are at increased risk of heart disease. Now an annual foot exam, or even more often than that, is very important. I always recommend my patients to just look at their feet every day, especially if you think your sensation is changing. That could be an early sign of what's called diabetic neuropathy. You also need a urine test every year to make sure your kidney function is normal. If there is a change in your kidney function or in the amount of protein in your urine, your provider might advise a different strategy, either for your blood sugar control or for your blood pressure control. There are some times when we recommend a special blood pressure medicine to protect the kidney even when the blood pressure is normal. This happens when we see early signs of kidney disease in people with diabetes, just to protect you from any problems in the future. We now know that people with type 1 diabetes are at more risk of developing bone disease like osteoporosis, and we also do promote maintaining normal vitamin D levels and calcium intake. I think it's important to talk about alcohol as it relates to type 1 diabetes, mainly because it's another thing that changes your blood sugar in the moment and you have to adjust. Hypoglycemia or low blood sugar due to alcohol is a common problem and the best way to avoid it is to not drink alcohol. If you are to drink alcohol, the choice, especially in the evening before sleep, is to eat food with the alcohol. So as you can see, a new diagnosis of type 1 diabetes is a challenge and it requires learning a new set of skills, amassing a whole new set of knowledge, and insulin therapy has come a long way to make it more patient-centered, patient-oriented, so that you can control your diabetes. It does not need to control you.